I will give you the floor here to defend Ed Leslie as a Starcade main event challenger for the World Heavyweight title. Anybody that's not willing to accept the fact that they made bad choices has never been in the business of making good ones. My only mission was to turn the first dollar of profit that that company had ever turned in the history of that division. We emerged from being perceived mm -hmm. as a small regional wrestling company to being something more mainstream and more palatable for people like Eminem Mars and GM and you know Coors Light and, and mainstream advertisers because oh, no, that's what that was that's what was really hurting us. We couldn't get national advertising. There's wisdom in it. I just wondered if you were able to say that at a table in Turner's I did. headquarters. I did. It got me a lot of heat. Yeah. Got me a lot of heat. I was the kid from Minneapolis that never never laced up a damn boot in his life, and all of a sudden now I'm kind of taking. I didn't mean it to be. Didn't want anybody to take it personally, but I'm taking shots at people that. Were from the South, and that didn't go over all that well. You know, the idea was never to pick you, you know, cherry pick anybody from WWF. Those people came to me. In most cases, I didn't go to them. I didn't sit in a room and go, "Okay, who can I take from WWE?" That's that never happened. The narrative out of WWE is that oh, Ted Turner just wanted to, you know, kick Vince McMahon's ass, and it was a Vince McMahon Ted Turner war. It really wasn't. I'm sure that made Vince feel better while he was getting his ass kicked. And one of the very first things that Larry Zabisco said to me, and he was one of the very first people to approach me once I showed up on, on location to shoot a show. He said, Eric, once you sign the dotted line here, you get a paycheck for life. How persona non grata is Sid? Uh, stemming from this, is there any consideration of bringing him back to no. 94? No. no, he he could not have buried himself in a deeper hole. A that whole Freebird, you know, overweight Freebird gimmick was was tired and old. In 1994, it was tired and old, and kind of dated. So I can't remember if we quit or if I let him go. But if I offered him 75 grand, it was probably my polite way of saying you're fired. Right. Yeah, <laughs> I had. Just hired Sherry Martell, and Missy pitched a fit. She was loud. She was out of control. She was saying things in front of people that was just inappropriate. And I, it was Missy Hyatt, for crying out loud. He's a good-looking guy. He was in great shape. But there was something about him. Didn't have the passion? She was a dick. I just didn't like him. I agreed to the program, hoping I was wrong about him. And when he didn't want to do the finish, I showed him where the door was. And it was one of the happier days of my life. You didn't do it by FedEx? You did that one in no, person? No, I did that one like... just like this. <laughs> Hit the fucking bricks, dude. Is that about how that it went? That was exactly how it went. There were many conversations that I had with Dusty Rhodes uh, before Ric Flair came back to WCW about Ric Flair and how they would never work together again and all the evil things that Ric Flair did. And then I'd hear it from Ric Flair about all the evil things that Dusty Rhodes did. And, you know, there's probably a little bit of truth on both sides of that equation, but the heat between the two of them was very real. In their minds, it was, you know, very real. So it was tough. And Rick was, Rude was really pissed off at Ric Flair. I had to get that title back. I, 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 Rick, Rick Flair wouldn't talk to Rick, wouldn't go near Rick Rude. Was this an issue for you with mm -hmm. Vader and trying to protect other people, his yeah. image with other people? Because I, was, I could <laughs> give two shits right. what people in Japan thought of Vader when I was paying Vader right. half a million dollars a year. Mick was determined to wrestle a style that put him at risk, put us at risk. Mm -hmm. potentially put fans at risk and that became kind of a an issue between us. Randy came with Slim Jim and the Slim Jim sponsorship covered most if not all of Randy's initial year for second year of his contract. Hulk wanted to work with Rick that was the best play for Hulk so then it became 
all right, what do we do with Hulk and Rick? How do we build that story? How do we tell that story? Jimmy diminished Hulk. He took away from Hulk. He didn't add, he took away. And, but there was nothing I could do about that. Hogan makes an appearance here in the main event. Uh, he's involved all over the show in numerous segments, including a, a live interview in front of the crowd, where he's booed. Was that unexpected? Yes. As he left the courthouse before stepping into an airport taxi, he points to the news cameras and says, do you remember? No. Better watch the pay-per-view this Sunday, brother. I love him. Coming out of the man's <laughs> trial. How do, you, how do you not love a I guy was like that? that? He stated he was paid less than many of the company's Caucasian, company's Caucasian wrestlers because he was African-American and made to look loud, obnoxious, pompous, and shiftless. End quote. That describes 90% of the people that have ever worked in a wrestling business. <laughs>